When you're working in the CorelDRAW graphics suite, while most trainers in the market are training just in draw, you really want to be aware of photo paint. No matter what type of industry you'll be doing graphic design for, you want to be able to work in CorelDRAW and Corel Photo Paint. You want to be able to utilize the entire Corel graphics suite. So we will cover some things relating to photo paint. Now, if you need in-depth or more advanced training, you go to advancedartist.com and pick up the power training series. It's like 37 hours of in-depth training in draw and photo paint, and the price is very reasonable on that. But we'll go ahead and look at pages here in Corel Draw and Corel Photo Paint. Two different applications. As you can see here, here's photo paint with the same document set up in it. A couple of differences between the two, and we'll get into some of that in this session. Go ahead, going back to draw here. We actually have a graphic set up on our page here. All of this design was actually set up with a template or designs that are available freely on our new artamp.com website. You want to go check that out, free vector graphics. You can use for your sign business, your t-shirt business, whatever, what have you. We've got a lot of our own art there as well as links to some of the free art that's available across the internet from some of the best artists in the world. To do that, the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and start a new instance of Corel Draw. And we'll let that go ahead. And the first thing we'll see is we'll see our quick start when we open Corel Draw. And from here, we can actually start a new blank document, start a new from template. We can open another. If we click here, we'll be able to go ahead and open another file. So now, if we want a new document, we can come up here to this icon all the way in the upper left. And all we have to do is click on that. Or we can go to File. And the first thing we'll have here is New. Or we can hit Control N. Now, Corel will open by default a letter page, but you can change that in your options, what Corel will do when you come in and open up new pages from the actually from the quick start and you'll find that under tools and options and if we go here to excuse me workspace general on startup on Corel draw startup welcome screen that's what we just saw but we could change that to start a new document opening is this existing document etc in our options I'll go ahead and cancel that for now now when Corel opens and we don't have any ob objects selected we have what is available to us up here as the property bar no selection now really this should be the property bar page setup because everything in this particular property bar deals with page setup so to continue here I want to go back to our open graphic that we had here with our skull design and we'll take a look at how we get to that particular property bar we want to be aware that if we have anything selected in Corel Draw, that property bar is not going to be available to us for our layout or our page setup in Corel Draw. we have to left click in the workspace or deselect everything. Now we've got nothing selected and then we get this page setup property bar. Now we've got some settings in this property bar we want to take a look at. First of all we've got a list of all the available sizes that we have for pages. Now this is the default installation and Corel has a number of different sizes available to us but we can edit this list and create custom page sizes and we'll get into that in just a minute. Next to this we have what is basically the sizes, the height and width of our pages. We have also if our page is set to a portrait or a landscape so you notice that I can left click over here, change to a letter page, left clicking on this arrow here. And I'll go ahead and zoom out just a bit here. And now that we've got this letter page set up, you see that I can go over here and click here on landscape and that'll change my page layout. Now I've got this set up so that apply page layout to all pages. Now if this is set to apply page layout to current page only, we'll take a look at what happens here. If I left click down here on page one and select insert page after, I'll get a blank page with the same setup. However, if I go ahead and select Apply Page Layout to Current Page Only, and I change this page to, let's say, 24.0 to 36.0, basically a sign size page, as you can see here. Then if I go back to page one, you'll notice that page one is still set up as a letter size page. But this page here on page two is actually 24 by 36 and that was because I had apply page layout to current page only. Now if I click here apply page layout to all pages you notice if I go back to page one it's still eight and a half by eleven but if I go ahead and change this now let's change this to let's say a tabloid size select OK now I've got a tabloid page here go back to page one I've got tabloid size but it's set up as a landscape so you can see how this apply page layout to all pages or apply page layout to current page only works within the graphics application. Now if I go to here I've got units, I could change my units to millimeters, etc. based on this page. I can also change my nudge offset. Well what is my nudge? If I select this graphic and hit my up arrow, okay, you can see that I'm actually moving that. If I click off and change this nub to let's say 1.5 inches 
and then hit my up arrow key, you can see I've changed the distance of my nudge there. Also for duplication, you'll notice that if I hit Control D, I'll duplicate at about a half an inch up to the right there. If I delete this, come to my duplication, let's change this to 2.5 inches. Do the same here, 2.5. You want to be aware of these properties bars when you're dealing with objects where you can do data entry because you can just enter through your keypad or you can slide up and down, left click when you see your cursor change and slide up and down. Now if I hit Control D again, got to have my object selected, left click on that, select the object, hit Control D, you can see my duplication offset is significantly more than it was before. Now if we look at photo paint, and I'll go ahead and start photo paint now and we'll take a look at some of the basics in photo paint here. And we'll get the same welcome screen, just a little bit different based on working with a pixel or raster environment as opposed to Corel Draw being vector and a page layout environment. And we can go new from document, new from clipboard. If I had something on the clipboard, I could open a new document, Corel would automatically paste it in, or acquire an image and I could bring in something from the scanner and it would open automatically. Now if I go to new blank document, I'll be able to select the type of document I want, also the color mode, black and white, grayscale, palleted, RGB, lab, CMYK, etc. Some different size setups here, basic your standard photo sizes, your web layout sizes, legal, tabloid, etc., and so on. You can also create a movie here. You can also set your res resolution. If you're doing paper printing, you'd want to be at 150 to 300 DPI. And you can see if you're going to work with, set up whether you're going to work with inches, pixels, etc. Now, if I select OK, your page size in Photo Paint is really here under Image. And you can click on that, and you can go to Page Size, as you can see here, and that'll bring up the dialog for that. Or you can also go to image and resample and you can change your setup there. Let's say you want this 5 by 7 inches at 300 dpi and I can key this in here and select OK. Now something inter interesting about photo paint as opposed to pages, and you can see how my image changed there because of resolution. Really your pages are set up more as objects and function through the objects docker in photo paint. And they're really kind of set up like layers in Photoshop. Photoshop's a little bit different than photo paint. You deal with layers in photo paint you deal with objects and of course in Corel Draw you have objects and layers also. But if I go down here and I left click on new object, now I've got a new object, that's kind of like the second page. And if I do something in here I could go ahead and write here and it would show up or just create something or do whatever. But Photo Paint the workspace is a little bit different. Once again everything's pretty much under image. If you select off of everything you won't get that properties bar that you get when you have no selection in Draw. I want to go ahead and bring up Draw again here and we'll continue with our page tutorial working in draw. Something we want to be aware of is that we can come down here from this list and we can go to edit list and we can create custom list. We can actually remove pages. Let's say I wanted to get rid of some of these Japanese pages. I don't need these down here. We've got this Japanese postcard. I can select mm -hmm. delete page, select OK and that page will be removed. I can also come here and we'll change this to inches and I'll make this at let's say 24.0 by let's say 36 this would be a vertical standard sign, 2 by 3 foot sign size. And I change my bleed to, let's say, 1.0. And I want to save this page. And we'll save this page as vert sign 2x3. And that's a standard setup. And I select that. Now I've got that saved. Now, if I look at my page properties here, I can go up here to page. I've set this bleed up and I've saved this page. If I come up here, you can see we've got some settings for show page border show printable area and show bleed area. Now if that's set up in my size here at 1.0 inches that'll show up if I select that to show up. But first what I want to do is we'll go ahead and select OK and we'll change our page size. Here it is 24 by 36. Now you see I can't see any bleed area here in this page. However if I go back to edit this list which is really just my options I come up here to page and I select show bleed area and select OK now I can see my bleed area on the page. And I know if I go past this, it's not going to print. Even though this is my correct size, if I go past it, it's not going to print because that's my bleed area. Now I can also go back here to edit this list on my pages. You'll see I can go to Layout, Full Page, and I could change this to a book or something like that. I can go to Labels, which we've got a number of labels that Corel already has set up within the work of the options if I want to deal with some labels. And I can also go to my background. I can change the color of the background of my page. Let's say I want a gray background for this particular setup. Select OK. Now you see my background is set up as gray. Go back again and I can go to edit this list and we'll go back to background. You can see that I could also select a bitmap. Bring that into my background would be 
a bitmap. 